friends, welcome to Lady of the Unknown Oracle. This is Sophie. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am so excited to have you. If you are returning, thank you so much for all of your love and support. I appreciate it more than my words can express. So Aries, this is going to be your February 2019 reading. I apologize for the tardiness. I am coming out of a crazy heavy purge. Um, and it has definitely taken its toll on me, so please forgive me, I apologize, thank you for your patience. And we're just going to get right into it. Please keep in mind that this reading is general and may not reflect your current situation, okay? Uh, but I do recommend revisiting this reading towards the end of the month, just in case your situation changes, then the messages um, today could be useful for you. If it does resonate, I hope that it provides you with the clarity and guidance that you seek moving forward, okay? This community serves to heal and encourage everyone passing through. So if you are looking for camaraderie and support, you are with the right soul family, okay? All right, Aries. February 2019. Let's see what's coming in for you. February 2019, please. Overarching theme or energy. If you're dealing with a Scorpio, this will be very relevant to you, Aries. Because while I was pre-shuffling, the Queen of Cups and Death came out. Either that or you were undergoing a very, very, very intense emotional transition due to some type of loss recently. This could be an ending from a relationship, the quitting of a very, um, of your first job or a job that being let go from a job or changing career paths, some type of ending, okay? So remember the queen of Raphael, this is the king of cups. The queen of cups had come up in the first shuffle. Okay. Two of Michael. So coming out of uncertainty with the sun. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. So there was something either before you were feeling emotionally guarded towards someone or something, possibly a Leo if you are dealing with a Leo or an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or a water sign, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Okay, but definitely very, very heavy Leo here and a very strong water energy. But overall, Aries, this could just be you overcoming some type of indecision within a relationship or outside of a relationship, just within yourself. There is something, there's something from the past that you are getting over, some type of block, something that kept you, some type of fixation that was keeping you from moving forward. It looks like whatever it was, it took a very emotional toll on you, but you are you are recovered and you're coming through as being completely healed, being able to see past what happened, past the event, and you are no longer in the state of two of the two of swords where you're still trying to go within and find what you want. You already know what you want, and it could really just be a matter of of getting there. This could, again, involve a water sign or a Leo. If not, you just it could be that you have Leo placements in your chart um, or heavy water in your chart as well. This could be a, a personal, a self-transformation. Let's see what February has for you, my friends. Aries, February 2019 leaving something behind and search for your happiness with the eight of cups and the nine of cups that were at the bottom of the deck in the split so let's see scorpio energy again sagittarius possibly more air energy possibly earth sign as well but it looks like it could have something to do with work this could be your own personal clarity in your own life. This could be within a partnership. Overall, though, there is very heavy, there is very heavy, um, the truth is coming out. The truth has come out. You are realizing something extremely important, something to reestablish your own internal balance or just being able to repair relationships that you have with other people. Or a truth about these relationships that are causing you to Look at them differently, 
but realize that there's an end that has to be put somewhere. This could be a cycle um, where, you know, the, the end doesn't have to be the end of an actual connection, but it can be the end of whatever cycle has been going on. This here. Communication, possibly within a household. I, the cards are talking. So let me go ahead and cut. Aries, this is going to be particularly relevant if you are currently living with this person. If this is a love situation for you, if you're living with them or if you have plans to move in together, or if this is just a brand new beginning that you've been working very hard on. So the overarching energy here is the Three of Cups, which is beautiful. This is reunion, celebration. You've been putting in a lot of hard work into something, but overall, overall, this is just the celebration for connection. This could also be if this is a reading for you and your own personal development moving forward. This is you uniting your mind, your heart, and your spirit. You are reaching the, the, the union of the Trinity here. Beautiful. You are the Ace of Pentacles right now. This is being crossed by the Ten of Pentacles. I wonder why. If you are in a family situation or perhaps you're in the, you're in the throes of a potential Ten of Pentacles situation, there might be a new offer here that would cause you to reset what this looks like. On your mind, you've got the Fool, so here you are. In your heart, you've got the Four of Cups, so you feel like you're missing out on something. Something's not right. Something's missing. In the past, you had the Eight of Cups, so you left something behind. Coming in, you've got the, nine, the Knight of Cups, so someone is coming in with an offer of love. Um, you see yourself as the Two of Pentacles. You have options. In the environment, you've got the Page of Swords. Someone could be doing some research. Maybe you're doing research. This could also be an air sign, a younger air sign. Your fear here is the Two of Cups. Okay. And the potential outcome is the Five of Wands. All right. All right. No problem. King of Swords at the bottom. So more air energy. More air energy, Aries. You could be involved with an air sign. Let's see. Let's clarify because this reading could go, this reading could go one of two ways and I, I'm not going to jump the gun just yet. There is something missing though, okay? And I have a, wow, two cards just went flying. And I do get the feeling that, see with temperance, I do get the feeling that this is a, a current love relationship. All right, I'm gonna leave these over here on the side. This is the, it's the Wheel of Fortune and the Knight of Wands, okay? So something is tra changing quite drastically in terms of passion. If you are in a relationship, I'm going to address this, Ari guys, Aries, for February 2019, I'm seeing a very heavy partnership. So this is going to be just a love reading is how I'm going to read it because That's just the messages, the, the, the ways that I am able to read this right now has to do with a relationship that you want to become permanent, but something is missing. And I have a feeling that there's some type of passion here that's not in the relationship and it's making you second guess the, the longevity of the relationship. Okay. That's, that's what this is looking like to me. Like you guys are friends, you guys are great friends, but there's something here about, about passion that maybe the love is there, the, the plans for the future are there, but it feels like something has, has come come in. Some Jesus Lord. With the Ace of Swords. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. The cards are talking, so let me stop. Ace of Swords, Ace of Swords. Another ace. You're realizing something. At the bottom of the deck for the clarifiers, we've got the Eight of Swords. So there is a limitation here, Aries. There is something about this partnership that is leaving you feeling not completely whole. There's something missing. In your heart, you know there's something missing. Four of Cups. There might be an offer in your in your in your area, some type of 
it could be an offer of love, but I feel more like this offer here isn't an actual offer. It feels almost like something that you were offered in the past that you didn't take and now you're thinking about it. Okay, so with this Ace of Pentacles here, you've got a brand new beginning, a potential. It could be that you recently uh, moved in with someone. It could be that you guys are planning for the future. This is a very committed relationship and you have become exclusive finally. This could be an engagement. This could be a baby, right? Because this is being crossed by the Ten of Pentacles. And we've got the Ace of Pentacles right on top of the Ace of Pentacles. So whatever this is, double confirmation, brand new beginning here in the 3D world, some type of solid commitment, some type of possibility, the seed is being planted. The seed is being planted. With the Ten of Pentacles crossing, there is something, there's a decision here pertaining to how, how do you go about achieving the Ten of Pentacles? The Ten of Pentacles is a legacy. It's a family. It is a business. It is, um, children. It's, it's, it's being able to create things that outlive you. Right. So with the Ten of Pentacles, usually you have a family situation, especially since this is going to be primarily love. I'm seeing here that what's crossing you is the decision on how to proceed next. Yeah, there's some type of disorder. There's some type of disorder between you guys. I don't know what that is because you got the two, cu two of cups here. And with temperance, you've got this two of cups here. Now, if this were a personal, um, if this were just you within yourself, Aries, I would say that there's some type of offer you have here to move forward in your career. And in order to do that, you have to make peace with, with weaknesses from your past. Maybe there were things, skills that were not fully developed, um, offers that you know you were rejected from in the past that has left you feeling a little jaded, making you feel a little incapable. And so you're trying to come back out of that because you realize that you do have the ability Right? But with the fool, you're a little scared because you, you feel like you're kind of walking into the unknown. Even though this is a huge leap of faith you'd be taking, you're kind of terrified. Hence why the Eight of Swords is at the bottom. You're not sure if you can do it. Uh, but in a, in a love sense, there's disharmony. There's, there's something missing. Okay, On your mind, you've got the fool. So taking a leap of faith, maybe you came out of a really rough relationship in the past. And so this is very uncharted territory for you. You feel like you really are... You're going in blind, right? You feel like you're going in blind with the King of Pentacles. Absolutely. This person could be very ready to settle down. This could be an earth sign that you're dealing with, another Aries. Uh, but either way, this person is very stable, okay? King of Pentacles. He's a king. He's coming at you strong, very well manifested, has worked for everything that he has in his life, wanting to take this jump with you into the future to create something very stable, something very long-lasting and committed with you. And there's something about it that makes you kind of terrifies you it kind of terrifies you because in your heart you're not sure if you should accept this offer this king of wands you got another king so i don't know if there is another person i don't know if there's another person who's interfering or meddling with this relationship that you have with this person or if it, or if you know if this was someone that perhaps you had a, a different connection with in the past again this is a, a king this is a king and this is a, a strong coming in very passionately it could have been a fire sign that you were involved with in the past and i only say that because in the past you did leave something behind or someone behind right and i feel that while the relationship that you are currently in feels very safe i do feel like you are lacking something it feels like something is missing with the Wheel of Fortune and, and the, the Prince of Wands, I feel like this has something to do with passion. I feel like what you have is very safe, very loving, but something is lacking. And I apologize if this reading is oddly specific, Aries, but this is what I'm getting. Okay, so I feel like you are really torn between what you have and what you want. I will try to generalize it a little bit more. This may not be another person, but this could be a circumstance. What you have going on could feel very safe and feel like you like you should want it and you do want it. But at the same time, it, there's a big missing piece here. In the Eight of Cups, with the Eight of Cups, you left something behind. Yeah, you had the Four of Wands. You had some type of stability in the past. Probably another relationship could have been with a twin flame, could have been with a soulmate, but you left something or someone behind. Coming in, you've got the Knight of Cups. 
So there's, wow, with the Three of Swords, Judgment. Yeah, hold on, let me move this out of the way. So coming in, you definitely have an offer of love, right? Th this, if you are feeling jaded, if you're feeling jaded because of this missed opportunity in the past, or just an opportunity in the past that may have felt differently than the one you're in, and it makes you have second thoughts about the one that you're in, there's going to be this, there's going to be a need here for you to really strengthen your resolve and decide whether or not you want to continue forward in the relationship that you were in. Um, there is no doubt that you guys are moving forward in commitment. You guys are moving forward in reunion. But again, this is the Three of Cups, not the Two of Cups. And I understand the Two of Cups came out here. However, still in the clarifying deck, it has not yet come out. It may, um, you know, but... If you are with an air sign or an earth sign, um, just any sign really that you're in a committed relationship with, there is something here that's missing in your relationship, something that looks like was present in a relationship you had left in the past. And even though you don't mean to compare, you kind of are. Even though like, I don't know how to describe it, it feels like you know exactly why you left the, la the last person you left. Right? You knew it wasn't going to work out, but in a way you can't help but compare the chemistry or you can't help but compare, you know, like you, you know where you are is the better of the two, but where you are now still isn't exactly what you want. And it's going to be very difficult for you to move forward in making this decision because so far things have been going really well. It's, it's just what I'm seeing, Aries. Things between you and this person have been going extremely well. Things are very stable. But you are a fire sign and you need that passion. And I can't help but feel like the person you're with, and this could be vice versa, the energies can be re reversed, right? But I have a feeling that this person you're with is very safe and isn't providing the excitement that you want. So there's love here, there's stability here, but it's breaking your heart. There, there's a need here to talk about something. With judgment, you, there's, you can't help it. There's a need here to make a decision. The need to revive something. Maybe there was an initial passion you guys had that just fizzled out almost immediately. Because even though for you it's in your nature to be passionate, maybe this person was passionate because they were in love with you and now that you guys have become more comfortable, it's not really in their nature to be passionate. So now that the, the, the being in love has worn off, now they're not as passionate, but you're still you're still rearing and ready to go. Right? So... And especially with the overarching energy being the king of cups with the two of swords and the sun. I feel like you're going to be coming out of this indecision. That's why this is coming in with the knight of cups, the judgment. You're coming out of almost like not wanting to look at the truth. And you're finally confronting the fact that there is a huge, a huge absence of something in your relationship. You see yourself as the two of pentacles. So you're weighing the pros and cons here. You're weighing the pros and cons here. With the two of pentacles, you've got two two different, you know, two pentacles. This could be two lists. It could be two, two responsibilities. With the six of swords, you don't have movement forward per se. What you have here is, is the, the gathering together of objective facts. You're gathering facts together to, to, to come, to be able to make a smooth transition forward. Let's just say that. So the six of, the six of swords is moving forward. It is smooth transitions forward. Excuse me. But it's doing so in a way that is following the objective, um, the objective truth, right? It's following the facts. It's moving forward in confidence, knowing that you've crossed all your T's and dotted your I's like that. So with the two of pentacles and the six of swords, you are quite literally doing a little to-do list or a little uh, pros and cons list in your head. You're weighing out the great parts of the relationship and the not so great part of parts of the relationship and you're trying to see if you are willing to live forever or for as long as you possibly can in a relationship that has something that has all almost everything else except for the one thing that you really really want the one thing that you really really miss in your environment you've got the page of swords you're gathering information you're gathering the information that you need in order to make this pros and cons list and it is not looking good Ten of Wands is it's still wands. There's passion. Just the fact that you even have to do this is like killing you. Queen of Pentacles. Because if you're going to become stable with this person, you're you're really thinking long and hard about the long term. You're thinking about the long term, definitely, Aries. 
you, this is someone that you plan on marrying, someone who you would want to have children with, someone that you, you know, feel very comfortable financially with, someone who supports you in everything that you do. However, the thought of going the rest of your life without the passion is really driving you up the wall. With the fear of the Two of Cups here, the Four of Cups, you're afraid that somewhere along the way you're going to take the relationship for granted. Or perhaps by... You're afraid either that in the future, whatever it is you guys are missing is going to be the reason you take it for granted, or you are afraid that where you see the opportunity for this need to be met, that you will lose that opportunity because you are afraid to leave the safety net you are currently in. I hope that makes sense. I, I There's no doubt you're looking to be secure, you know, you know, stable with this person in terms of the 3D. This could be heavy earth, earth and fire. This could be a Virgo. This could definitely be a Virgo. With the two of pentacles, again, you're weighing the pros and cons. You're going within. You might even be withdrawing a little bit because you're really trying to figure things out. You know something is missing. And if this isn't, if, it, if this is not you already realizing what's missing, this is you being afraid of confronting the truth because you don't know what you're going to do with it. In your outcome, you've got the five of wands with the four of pentacles, trying to gather your strength, the nine of pentacles and the six of cups. And remember the ace, the ace of swords came out. So what will set you free is literally the truth and clarity. So in the potential outcome with the five of wands, you know, Six of Cups is very friendly energy, you know, Six of Cups, Three of Cups, very, very friendly. Four of Pentacles is very stable, holding on to dear life for the things that you have. Nine of Pentacles is feeling very safe and secure independently. This connection makes you feel very, very secure and you don't want to let it go. You guys are very friendly and that's great, but I feel like what is going to be conflicting for you with the Five of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles, I see a lot of inner conflict. You know, you are thinking really long, really hard about whether or not you can see the future despite the thing you're missing. That's all I'm seeing, Aries. This could be a soulmate, right? You've got the two of cups with the six of cups. This could be past life. The connection that you guys share could be very intense. You do have the four of wands, right? So. This person in particular, the King of Wands, may not be another person. This could literally just be who your King of Pentacles was at the start of your relationship. And as you guys left certain things in the past in order to have this new life together, to create this new thing together, you reached a point where the ability to stay in that passion has kind of lost itself. And now what you didn't realize was that part of what helped to make up for other things that are absent in the relationship was the passion. Or something else, it may not be passion, but I'm feeling very much like this is a passion situation for you. Something is lacking in the chemistry department right now, where it wasn't before, or perhaps in the past you've never had an issue with that, but this particular person is so very, this is heavy earth, right? I'm, I, feel, I feel very confident that this person is likely a Virgo. You know, they, they are very, very strategic, very, very um, meticulous in everything that they do, very stable. They are very serious about you. And as a result, they want to build an empire with you. They support you wholeheartedly. They love you very much, Aries. I see this. They love you. But there is something that is missing. And it may not be passion. Fill in the blank. Whatever it is that's missing, that's what it is. There is something here that's missing. And it's really eating you up. Because while you have everything except for that one thing, that one thing is extremely important to you. And you see yourself in the future, really being hung up on it. The Six of Cups could also be, be a past. It, with the Six of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles, I see possibly, possibly with the Five of Wands as well, with the Four of Pentacles, I possibly see that as the potential outcome, the longer you go in this relationship, the more you're going to regret not, be, not staying single. Okay. There's a sense here of, of trying, you're conflicted, right? You're conflicted, but here's the thing. You wouldn't be conflicted if you didn't have 
something that you didn't in some way miss a lot, right? So with the five of wands, the four of pentacles, you're holding on very dear to, to what it is you have. You're not trying to let the, the, the competition, the inner conflict, the different competing ideas, people's expectations, your expectations. You're trying not to let it all get the best of you. So you're holding on to what you have. But what, but what I see is that you guys have something that is very friendly. And while it is very pure, a very sweet connection, something is missing. You want stability and, and a future, but they're not providing you with something. And you're going within, right? You're, you're making a pros and cons list. Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I literally see you gathering the facts. You're trying to move forward and make a decision, but you can't. You're afraid of losing this person. This person makes you feel very stable. This person makes you feel very supported, but you're afraid that in spite of how great the connection is, you're not going to feel fulfilled. The Four of Cups is not fulfilled. The Four of Cups is either not fulfilled or it, it feels like it's missing an opportunity in the background. So either this Two of Cups is you currently and you feel you're afraid that you're not going to um, truly enjoy it to the extent that you feel like you should given the stability provides you, or you're afraid that there is someone who is in, in your environment right now who could offer you what it is you're missing and instead you're spending your time with this person trying to build something that deep down inside you realize may not be built on the foundation you want it to be built on so my advice to you aries is to take this time that you're going through this pros and cons list and really decide how important this thing that's missing is for you something's missing and I, I apologize if this is going to be a shorter reading compared to most, but this is really all I'm seeing. This is a love reading. This could be, you know, of course, this could always be a self, self-love self reading where there is something that you are lacking in your current life, something in your job and career, something you are missing. You are trying to strike a balance between a couple of things, the pros and cons. You're in a situation that you don't really like. You know that your jobs aren't your um, your bosses are not managing you well. Your coworkers are are you know really not treating you very well, and in the end, you see yourself as putting this conflict in the past. You see yourself as separating yourself from this job, no matter how much stability it's provided you up to this point. No matter the friends that you've made there, you see yourself as as becoming independent from it. In an, in an effort to get rid of the competition and you, you remove yourself from the situation. You know, but this is a very difficult decision because you're going within and it's the Ten of Wands for you, right? The idea of settling down or the idea of the stability that you currently have is really weighing heavily on you. Someone here is ready. Someone here is the fool with the King of Pentacles. Someone here is equally unsure, but also very ready to settle down with you. But you here are really trying to decide whether or not this is what you want. And with the King of Cups and the Two of Michael, with the Sun, there's definitely there's definitely a need to go within and decide what is going to make you happy. What is going to make you happy? With the King of Swords, the King of Swords asks you to be honest with yourself. Truly, deep down inside, what is, and just keep in mind here, you've got air energy, water energy, water energy, air energy. Okay. So this is to me communicating very similar messages with the King of Cups and the two of Michael. You've got someone who is going within to really decide in their emotions, right? They're closing, they're closing their logic and going within to decide what's going to bring them happiness with the sun. Right. But then you've also got the King of Swords who does what is just and right, but he's does, he's doing what makes sense in order to bring himself to a, a point of celebration and happiness. So it's the same different elements, but the same combination of, of interpretation. Okay, Aries. So my friend, I would say my biggest recommendation to you so far with the eight of swords and the ace of swords, there's a, there's a really, really big push here for you to be clear and honest with yourself. If there is something missing from the relationship, either you guys make it work and create what's missing or you move on from it. That is easier said than done, but it is the truth. Okay, there is no, there is no, there is no beauty in settling for a life that is not true to you. And so while I want to be able to sit here and tell you, oh, well, you can make it work. Some things cannot be worked out. There is such thing as incompatibility. And if you are with somebody right now who does not meet you at the same level that you are on, and that's not to say you're at a higher or lower level, but you know, just on a different frequency, perhaps you guys are just two different types of people and certain things that you find important are not important to them and it's affecting the quality of your life 
and no matter how much you talk to them, they say, listen, it's my way or the highway, then you have to make the decision, Aries, to either live a life by their standards or, or live a life by yours. Okay, this is the truth. What makes you happy? And if you are fighting with yourself to try to stay, if you are trying to convince yourself of all the reasons you should be happy, even though you're not, then you've already answered your question. You're not happy. Okay, I'm going to pull um, a Romance Angels card for you really quickly. And then that's it. But I, I see huge, great stability, but you guys are, are coming in close to the point where things are going to become kind of permanent, Aries. So please be mindful of the time, right? Because I feel like given your train of thought right now, you might end up saying yes to a proposal or yes to moving in or yes to something semi-permanent that is going to ele like elevate your relationship to another level, but you're not, you're not actually, it's not coming from a place of yes. It's coming from a place of I'm afraid to be alone or I'm afraid I'll never find someone this stable again. You know, it's not coming from a place of I love you. It's coming from, I don't know if I could ever do better than you. That's not the same. So pick wisely, pick for yourself. Past life, absolutely could be past life with the six of cups and the two of cups could very well be past life. But remember that soulmate relationships do not have to be forever after relationships, they can be karmic. Okay, Wheel of Fortune is a divine timing as well. So you've been expressing your love, or perhaps that's what's missing. You express your love in other ways, but you guys have different love languages. Right? So maybe you enjoy affection, but they enjoy giving you gifts. Worth waiting for. The real, real love is worth waiting for. Okay? Calling in your soulmate. Calling in your soulmate to me tells me, releasing your ex... So this could be, this could be one of two things, Aries. So you could be right now doing too much comparison between an old love, an old flame versus your new one. And it could be that there is an ex in your, in your environment or an ex that you were with right before the person with, that you are with now. And you're comparing them so much that you almost are, you, you know, you're, you're taking the connection that you have with this person and you're making it seem like the connection is not as great compared to the last one you were in, even though the last one you were in was actually very damaging to you. And so there's a call here to release your last partner because you've already called in your soulmate and you've waited a very long time. And even though it's taking a little bit of a while for you guys to express your love to each other, and this is a slower relationship than what you're used to, the other one might have been very passionate, but maybe that's all there was. It was a sex only relationship. And the one that you have now is so stable that you're comparing it, but almost taking the richness of it away from you. Self-sabotage, right? With the eight of swords. Or it could be that who you're with now, you really shouldn't be with, with right now. It could be that you've been calling in your soulmate. You've been really wanting someone to come in. And now that this person has come in, right, you feel a very intense connection with them. But perhaps it's just the stability that you're feeling very connected to and not them. So in the meantime, there's something going on here with expressing your love. Either someone is or someone isn't expressing their love well enough. Or the way they express it is really not in the same love language as yours. And you've been waiting for a long time thinking, you know, this is really a connection worth waiting for. I feel a very strong connection, right? This is a connection worth waiting for. It might be, or it could be that somewhere right around the corner, right around the river bend, you've got a past life relationship coming towards you. And you will not be able to see it because you'll be in this committed relationship with this person. Even though you feel that it's really, it's, it's feeling a little unnatural for you to try to push and go against the grain. There's something about this that you feel is missing and it's really hard to shake off, but Everything else is saying that you should be okay with this, but you're really not. And so you could actually be calling in your soulmate, realizing that you're not with the right person. You're just with someone who you should feel like they're right for you, but they're not actually. And you'll actually miss out on an incredible bond with someone else because you're settling. You're settling for less. It doesn't matter the, the stability they provide you. If you are with someone who is not making you happy on all fronts, for the most part, Right? If you guys can't talk your way through to some type of compromise or solution, then you are settling. 
110% you're settling. And I can sit here and tell you that the sacrifices are, no, no ma'am, no sir. If in all the ways that matter, this person is not compatible, you will suffer. In the future, it's going to come back. It's going to come back because if it's not good now, it's going to get worse later. And I'm just going to be straight up with you. If it's not good now, if you're doing this pros and cons thing now, early on, before the proposal, before the moving in, you're doing this pros and cons thing now, this person is not for you. And you're going to miss out on a truly intense, truly wonderful, life-changing connection, connection later down the road because you're already going to be tied up in this very serious situation. You guys might have kids. You guys might be married. You could have an empire that you're building together. It's going to be very difficult to walk away. And you're trying very hard to convince yourself that this is the situation that you should be in. When in reality, it looks to me, if this is resonating with you so far, I, to me, this does not look like this is the kind of relationship you are meant for. This person is great. They're beautiful. They're beautiful to you. They love you. They're giving you, you know, what they, what they believe is, is love, you know, and it could be. There are different ways that we communicate and show love to each other. However, I see that you notice something is missing. And to me, that's a big red flag. If something is missing, you will never, you'll never be completely satisfied with this connection. And that's important. You don't deserve that and they don't deserve that. And you can get through it. There's a change going on here. And so with the Wheel of Fortune, with the Prince of Wands, there could be, there could be a change in this passion, right? There, you guys could right now with the Five of Wands and the Four of Pentacles, you know, you could be holding on to this. And trying to wait it out to look past the competition, the, the competing ideas, the competing values, the inner conflict. Or this could be a fire sign. This could be a fire sign that's coming in, a past life relationship that's coming in. That may not be this king of pentacles yet, but would meet you eye to eye in all the other ways that matter. Okay. Aries, I am sorry that this was so incredibly specific. Okay, if this did not resonate with you... It did not resonate with you and this is not your message and I apologize profusely, okay? But this this came out for a reason and I feel like this was meant to clarify a situation for someone, okay? If you are fighting with yourself, sweetie, really fighting with yourself about a brand new relationship or a relationship that is quickly becoming very serious and you are not sure if it is right for you, it is probably not and there's nothing to feel bad about. We all have different needs, and I know you are not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, okay? But you cannot be the sacrificial lamb when it comes to relationships. You cannot, you cannot prioritize yourself so far down on the priorities list that you basically sacrifice your life, your life in order to make someone else happy. That is not why we are here. So this person could be very sweet to you and very good to you and very loving and giving and, and provides everything you could ever want. And that's beautiful. But if they do not meet your needs, it does not make you a selfish person. It just makes you guys incompatible. And that happens. It will likely not get better. They seldom do. If you talk to this person and they are willing to try, okay, to continue to, to work on things, you know, it takes two people. But if it is not within their nature, you will be constantly at a point where you're going to be revisiting the same conversation over and over throughout your relationship for the rest of your lives, most likely. It's the same way if someone tried to make you, you know, something that you're not and you say that you're going to try for them, you're naturally going to go back into your natural state and they're going to have to keep on asking you to do those things. No matter how great your intentions are, they are still going to have to revisit that topic with you periodically throughout the relationship because you'll forget it's not part of you. So if you are okay with that, then that is your that is your decision to make. It's your free will to do whatever you want. Um, but if you are honest with yourself now and you realize that this is really not something that you want to be doing forever, you want someone who is able to surprise you in all of those really, you know, cute, sweet, you know, sexy ways. If, if it's passion for you, you want them to be a little bit spontaneous or a little bit more, you know, trying new things and whatnot you know, that may not be their natural inclination. Maybe they will be willing to try things when you offer, but they may never be the person that offers something new. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to stop being so specific, but you guys, you know, if this is you, if this is you, definitely think about it because I'm seeing a huge absence and I, I do not feel like it is going to reconcile very easily. 
you guys are of two completely different natures and I, I don't I don't know all right so only you only you can decide what it is you're willing to um, to handle moving forward it is your decision at the end your free will your life all right Aries but you're magnificent and beautiful and you can take on any any new situation any new circumstance that you put your mind to this is a challenge for sure but you have clarity with the sun with the ace of swords wheel of fortune is divine timing okay there is something here that is going to clarify everything for you in february and you're gonna have to you know you're gonna be confronted with making a decision your decision could be to stay where you are but it could also be to become single from either from the connection or from the way you were thinking about things. Okay, so guys, I love you. I love you so much. I am so sorry that this is so specific. If it doesn't resonate, do not take it. Okay, if this is not exactly your situation, please do not take it. Um, but this is what came out. Okay, so I will leave you at that. I will leave it at that. Aries, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your presence so very much. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Please take care of yourself, okay? Um, and please leave a comment down below if you are looking for support or, you know, help discerning the, the elements going on in your situation. That is what I am here for, what this community is here for. So please, please, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If this resonated, please subscribe and like. Um, and I will see you guys next time, okay? I love you guys so very much. Thank you for being here with me. Mm, I love you. Until next time, okay? Bye, Aries.